next guest is CNN's chief medical correspondent. He's got several upcoming specials starting in mid-August. Please welcome the lovely Dr. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. Sanjay Gupta. Yeah. Dr. Gupta! It's an honor to be back. It's Thanks lovely for having that me. you haven't been here for ages. Where I have you been? Uh, you know, I've been busy. CNN? Doing a few things. I think I had three kids since I last saw you. Wow. Yeah. So. Well, you've kept your <laughs> slim figure. <laughs> you've got, you're actually very, very thin looking right now. Are you all right? Uh, no, I feel great. You know, I've been I've been uh, exercising a lot. Oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you too. I mean, you, No, you, I just kind of stopped eating. That'll do it as well. No, I lost a bit of weight too, but you look, I mean, are you, uh, what are you doing? No, I, I did this triathlon last Sunday in uh, New York City, yeah. I, uh, I turned 40 years old, and uh, I've been busy, and I said I want to uh, make some changes. So, um, so you, know. you lost some weight. You having a midlife crisis? No, no. I, <laughs> my wife watches your show yeah, every night, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> a little bit, maybe. Do they keep you at CNN because of Larry King? <laughs> <laughs> so, like... Larry's doing great. He, right, he okay. feels fine. He, he's, he has the look of a happily retired man. You know, yeah, he's yeah, he's, show. he's leaving. Yeah, 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 no, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's lovely, Larry, actually. He's very nice. He's been on your show a few yeah, times. Yeah, he has. Yeah. Yeah. Did you help him with... Because he, was, he wasn't as gassy when he was here last night. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like he's really kind of... I told him not to talk about that. So All right. <laughs> so how are you? What are the specials you've got coming up then? What have you been doing? We, uh, you know, it's been a busy year. I you know, was in Haiti uh, in the beginning of the year and then just right. got back there uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I've been working on a few things. There's, there's this place in, in Washington, uh, near, near Washington, called the, uh, the Institute for Undiagnosed Diseases. They, wow. They have this place where they literally, if there is someone who has a problem, a medical problem, right. and no one can figure it out. I mean, they literally have been an, a, everywhere. They go to this, this special ward where they have all these docs and these special tests, and they try and figure out what's going on with the that person. That must be kind of challenging. It, for it, the, yeah. Well, it must be challenging for them, but it must be challenging for, for doctors as well. Yeah. Because you guys don't like not knowing what the answer is, right? Well, you know, I, I think doctors like puzzles. And, right. and, and they, they, these are the ultimate puzzle solvers. It's, it's kind of like, you know, the real life house you know the, yeah yeah right and, and it, it, it is uh it, it's amazing uh, you know to, to 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 walk in place of last hope no one knows what's going on and finally get an answer to to your question and so that you uh, did you get any did you undiscover any undiscoverable yeah, diseases yeah. when you were there <laughs> i helped out a little bit yeah but, but mainly we were we were showing how a place like this works you know right. uh, you know how do you, you you still practice though right i yeah. do yeah. yeah no i i'm you know i'm a neurosurgeon i'm, I'm practicing uh which you know it's funny straddling two two lives now medicine and right. media people ask me that a lot are you still practicing and right. I think um, because I do some work in the news and the media right I, I appreciate medicine even more than I ever did before like I, and, and it's quite for a neurosurgeon is you, you're limited to the amount of hours you can do at, uh, at these things right isn't that right there there's uh, you have to do a certain amount of hours a month or something well no? now they have uh, regulations for the residents you know when I when right. I was training you, you I mean I literally would train 110 hours a week Wow I mean it, it was your entire life it was an entire decade of my life right. Right. But now they, they can't work more than 80 hours a week. So oh, well, there you are. There is a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> Now, you perform brain surgery. Then. I do. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you uh, do you listen to music when you do that? Like, because <laughs> people do right. I, These are long operations. I, this is a very serious topic, actually. Oh right. The music, yeah. You are, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <I> have, uh... <laughs> oh, Craig, you're so stupid. Am I, Doctor Gupta? Am I? I uh, I I have these. Uh... So we do, we do uh, operations of the brain and the spinal cord. Right. So I have different playlists for if I'm doing a brain case mm -hmm. versus a spinal cord case. Uh, I have a playlist for when I'm opening at the beginning of the case versus when I'm closing. Really? And a different playlist in the middle. Where does so Justin Bieber come in today? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to get added now. i got three yeah. daughters, so I'm uh, sure he's going to yeah, get yeah, added yeah, into yeah, my... Uh, yeah. yeah. So how long does... I mean, uh, I, I suppose it varies wildly from procedure to procedure, but how long would you say you'd be in a, uh, in a surgery for something like that? Uh, um, you know, the longest case that I, I probably do is around eight to ten hours. Good lord! Yeah, all day, and and uh, you know you don't stop. I mean you can't. Don't stop. you have to go to the? No, you got you got you got. I mean you you really have to you have to pace yourself so you don't drink a lot of fluids in the morning so you don't right. have to go and and uh, the nurses often will 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 squeeze like Jolly Rancher candies into your mask so you get a little bit of sugar while you're operating and. Wow. Do you ever ask them to do that when you're not? <laughs> <laughs> 
As soon as I said that, I knew what happened. <laughs> you forgot where you were, didn't you, Dr. Gupta? Yes, uh, I know. Could I have my double entendre removed? Is that... That's right. No, so you, 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 have, you can't go to the, the hair looks great, by the oh, way. Oh, they're touching great. Yeah. yeah uh, do you... <laughs> Me too. I'm getting. I'm getting it. Do, do people ask you if you dye your hair? Yeah, all the time. Yeah, well, it's crazy. Why? Everybody must dye their hair. Because right? I have plenty of gray. Is that what you're saying? It's right, crazy. Yeah, 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 no, it's coming you in. You have a little bit. You don't have much yeah, gray. No, you're only 40. I'm 48. With the next eight years, I'm telling it's you, coming. They will <laughs> ravage you. Why? What happened? I don't know. I just, you know, I get snow on the roof. I've got snow in the basement. I think you know. What I'm... <laughs> By the way, I mean, what are you, you, what are you asking me for? You're a is... doctor, for goodness' sake. I'm not... Yeah, but I'm still not sure if I know what that means. What, what? Snow in the roof, snow in the basement? Basement. Is... Well, <laughs> well, doctor, it's a comedy term. You probably wouldn't understand it. It's uh, to do with the aging process. Why does your hair go white, actually, as you get older? Ah, that's an interesting question. Well, you, you, there's melanin that makes your hair dark. Right. And you start to lose the melanin. But I found out you also, it, melanin just gradually withers away from your hair. But you right. also get air in, in the hair itself. Air? Yeah, so I don't know if you, if you notice that you're, you become an airhead, sort of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop. But, yeah, you, but your hair, I mean, you, your hair feels different as you get older. It does, yeah. Yeah, that's because yeah. of the air in the hair. Air in the hair. <laughs> air hair. This is like a Danny Kaye movie. <laughs> really? Your air gets, why? Well, but, you know, I grew up in Scotland. There was air there as well. Like, <laughs> right. It was different air. It was very damp <laughs> air, but it was there. But, but you weren't as old. No, so, I, I mean, wasn't. Your, your hair gets a little bit more brittle and air can get in the, in the hair. Oh, and gets it's, in between it and, and kind of dries it out? Is it gets it right in, the air goes into the follicle itself, so your, yeah. your, your hair actually is full of air. Right. It's, uh, and um, that makes no, it feel coarse and go gray. Yeah. It's not a bad thing. What, what about, you? I, I mean, if you're wearing pants, you don't get air. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, no, I had to, you keep me thinking. I yeah, should... <laughs> I tell you, you want undiagnosed conditions, doctor. <laughs> Let me talk it through for you. Well, listen, uh, it's lovely to see you again, Sanji. Thank you so I'll much for coming. always enjoy it. It's so I, uh, please, uh, let's not leave it so long next time. It's been too long. Well, you did pretty well without me. You look great. No, I'm all right. I, I need a checkup. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Sanji Gupta, everybody. We'll be right back. To the Late Late Show with Larry King, special guest me. Uh, <laughs> nice having you back. Thanks very much. What's happened is that, uh, as luck would have it, uh, on the very night the robot broke down, uh, a legend of broadcasting happened to be here. Could you stand over where the robot is? <laughs> no, you don't. Know, you don't. Know. Yeah, yes. Get serious. You got a great guest. Yeah, I know. I'm gone. I'm gone. All right. Yeah, well, let me introduce the guest. Just, go uh, don't, don't, don't. Go ahead. Don't. Oh. <laughs> he hurts me when you're not here. <laughs> My next guest is CNN's chief medical correspondent. His show Sanjay Gupta, MD, airs Saturday and Sunday mornings on CNN. Please welcome very talented Dr. Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> It's great you, you guys know each other, don't you, oh, from the yeah. CNN? Wow, we've worked together for years. One of my favorites. Really? I mean, uh, Whenever we had a medical crisis, bam, Sanjay was our chief guest. In fact, right. we're doing a special on Alzheimer's on May 1st. He'll be one of I the guests. I forgot about that. <laughs> that was, all right. Sorry. No, man. No, no, never, I know you. Never, well, do, I, that. I said, no, never do that. Never do that to him. <laughs> don't no, do no, that. Don't to do him. that to me. Now listen. Uh, are you a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon? I'm a brain surgeon. Brain surgeon. Why'd yeah. you move the snake closer to me when you asked that? Well, yeah. <laughs> are you a brain surgeon or a heart surgeon? <laughs> So, uh, what, now, is that true? Do brain surgeons think of, is Larry right, do brain surgeons think of heart surgeons as plumbers and, you know? Well, you know, I mean, there's, there's, there's good sort of uh, camaraderie and back and forth in the hospitals, for sure, yeah. I mean, you know, people think of the brain as sort of the seat of the soul. Right. And, uh, the heart, you know, is basically just a big pump. Well, that's so, what you think. Yeah. <laughs> Larry thinks that the heart is a romantic organ. I think they're both large, you know, muscle tissue masses, and they have no romantic connection or soul connection mm -hmm. at all. Really? I think, yeah, I think your soul is somewhere else, probably in your pants or something. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> Maybe not in your pants, but the robot's not working. You could transplant the heart, you can't transplant the brain. Well, not yet, but that, that will it come. It could happen, yeah. Do you think so, that would happen one day? Uh, I think it'd be very hard. Very hard. So it's, uh, you know, it's very intricate and there's lots well, of connections. it's not easy to transplant a heart either, though. Actually, it's not, it's like not that hard. Really? You just got a couple of big blood vessels, you sew them in. So people say it's easier to transplant a heart than actually doing heart bypass surgery. Really? Yeah, because you're sewing in big blood vessels when you do a heart transplant. Right. Uh, yeah. I, I, this is a different game yeah. you're in, though, really, to me. <laughs> I, I tell jokes to that guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So listen, I've been fo I follow you on the Twitter. Uh, you're you're big on the Twitter, and oh, um, Craigie Ferg. And uh, and I've been uh, I've been watching you. You were in Japan. Yep. Right now, how are things over there? You know, it's it's a, it's a disaster. Oh, and I know I, that I, absolutely. I, I, yeah. I mean, I, I come back from these places, and this, I mean, I just uh, you know, not to sound trite, but I mean, how good do we have it, right? I mean, these, of course, these, yeah. uh, people uh, living on the northeast coast there, they were completely slammed by the tsunami. Obviously, were you up near the reactor there? Yeah, we, yeah, we, were, we were as uh, you know before the whole concern about the reactor said we were about 30 kilometers away. Right. And then the concern started, and they started moving people further and further away. But yeah, I mean, the nuclear fears uh, continue now. You know, so many weeks later, this is a country, and people sort of know this, but this is a country that has a very antagonistic relationship with radiation. I mean, people live through Good, the yeah, bombs yeah, right. over there, and the country is older, so to build that nuclear facility was a, was a big deal mm -hmm. in, in Japan. People did not want it. And now this is just, uh, you know, in many ways going to confirm those, those awful fears. Now, the, the, this, I have not really got an idea of the size or scale of this problem. Is it, is it similar to Chernobyl? Is it that bad? Is it... Well, you know, they, 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 it's interesting because they have a scale of 1 to 7. Chernobyl was a 7. They're right. saying this is a six, wow. and, uh, but it could it could rise to the level of Chernobyl if it continues to get worse. I mean, things aren't under control as of yet. So, and I'm amazed by little things. You know, like you know, the the other day we heard that these these workers who are basically the last line of defense between the, this plant and the rest of Japan. Right. Um, they were walking in this radioactive water, and, and two of the guys, their boots were so low that the water seeped in, and the third guy had higher boots, so he wasn't affected by it. I, it's amazing to me they don't have adequate protection. I mean, these guys are, you know, doing amazing work, you know, they're... Yeah. Yeah, Why don't they have that? adequate protection? I don't know. It's just, it's been a bizarre thing, you know. We, we weren't getting adequate information. We've come to find out these guys aren't being adequately protected. Yeah. And yet everyone, I mean, the whole world's paying attention to this. How do you, how do you, uh, how do you deal with it when you come back from... From, from something like that, and you, how do you decompress? When you, you go to Larry's Bagel Store or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, because you can't, you can't walk around like you're a doctor, so I guess you have to you disengage at some point from the drama of right. what you're doing because it's it's re nearly all big drama with you all the time, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's hard. You know, this I, we were on a very rare vacation uh, when this earthquake happened. We right. haven't taken a family vacation in a couple of years. We finally got away for a kids' spring break, and 30 hours literally into the vacation is when the the earthquake happened. Right. And my wife just looked at me and she said. You're gonna go, aren't you? And three hours later, I was gone. It, you know, so we're used to this sort of thing. I think you know it's interesting, Craig. Larry has a couple of wives that have said to him, "You're gonna go, aren't you?" <laughs> what you're saying, Larry? I'm just filling the folks in a little bit of history. Is what you're saying? I want to say something. I was amazed because these past three minutes yeah. have been the most serious three minutes yeah, well, in six years. <laughs> Subject. I was listening very well, And you were very good. You asked good questions. So why do you go off tangent like that? Oh, you coming from you, that is great. No, really, the man, the man who stays on topic all the time. I've seen you ask a guest about their groceries. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe that was me, I don't know. Did you guys, well, so you, do uh, you work together now or do you work with the other uh, guy now? Huh? <laughs> you know, the, what, the, um, Piers Morgan. Yeah, no, I, I work with Piers too, but I worked with Larry for a long time, and we had some, uh, we had some, we had some fun shows. Are you going on the road together doing stand-up? I'd, I'd be happy yeah. to, Larry. He's, He's funny. I'm a funny guy sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, well, hey, wait a minute. You know, the, the, this would be a first. What? An Indian and a Jew tour together. And a Scotsman. A uh, Scotsman, Indian, Indian. And a Scotsman. Yeah. Jew. You come along. That's a joke. We'll take over. Uh, we can, uh, look, we, all we have to do is walk into a bar, and there's the show. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> what should we call the trio? What we call Let's the get trio? a name for the trio. Uh, King's Things. <laughs> Sounds good. That's my Twitter site. Yeah, I know. That's why I said it. King's What's your Twitter name? Uh, Sanjay Gupta, CNN. CNN, CNN yeah. yeah. Craigie Ferg. Craigie Ferg. Yeah. Yeah, Craigie Ferg. You know, isn't it good that, the, 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 that it's Craigie us that are on? Fer yeah, Craigie Ferg. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Craigie Whatever. Ferg. You I'm talking to Dr. Gupta. He's a brain surgeon, Larry. <laughs> 
Sing of the soul. Yeah. Transplant a brain. Are you out of your mind? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I think it could happen one day and robots okay, can take place Whose brain. brain would you transplant? Oh, I'd have yours, Larry. That's who <laughs> I want. I would have guessed you'd have taken Donald Trump. Well, it, easy access. Just lift that up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lovely to see you again. I know what you're thinking. Hey, why have they got the camera on Lesbian Row? <laughs> you gonna take that? Nah, I, th <laughs> listen, uh, uh, so, a Scotsman, an Indian, and a Jew. <laughs> I think that would work, actually, don't you think it would work? Do you know what about two Scotsmen came walking out of a bar? No. Could happen. <laughs> Here's the thing, should I be offended by that? People get very no. offended. All right, then. Okay. You got a brain surgeon sitting here. Yeah, here. brain surgeon. Yeah. Yeah. Should, should I, then, doctor, be offended? Be offended? offended? Yeah. Absolutely not. Do you get offended uh, by Indian jokes? Uh, yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you hear Indian jokes? Yeah, there's no well, Indian jokes. There's not not round here, I tell you that for another. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're done now. Uh, Larry, you want to... Who's uh, on tomorrow night, oh, Craig? Who gives a... Tootsie Fruits. <laughs> I'll tell you. They leave it. At. Oh, it's a good. Oh, actually, wow. There's a movie. It's Matthew McConaughey tomorrow night. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. <laughs> He's great. He is actually good. You know, which yeah, then we got a, a full week of guests. <laughs> Look, everybody, remember this. CBS cares. Am I right, fellas? They don't. Uh oh. <laughs> All right. Get out. guest is CNN's chief medical correspondent, his latest special, Big Hits, Broken Dreams. This is a doctor show? <laughs> That's this show. Uh, premieres uh, Sunday, January the 29th on uh, CNN. Please welcome the great Dr. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. Sanjay Gupta. Thanks for having me. Oh, good to see you. Good. I like, I like your suit. Yeah, you like that? Yeah, look at this, I the, uh... Well, good socks. I got good socks. Look at them. Oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Matches fancy your tie. socks say? Well, they don't... Well, I guess that, <laughs> yeah. but... You know what fancy socks says if you wear a suit, but you wear fancy socks unexpectedly? Huh. Adventurous in bed. <laughs> Brings me to my first that... question. Are you, Doctor? <laughs> Actually, I suppose if you have a working medical knowledge of the human body, you probably know right where to go to get I know the certain things, yeah. yes, yes. Is that why women are so attracted to doctors, I guess so? Yeah, part of the reason, yes. Yeah. That's a mojo. You... <laughs> yeah, very good. Hey, listen, I, had, I know everybody probably does this. I had shingles recently. Yeah, I, I'm yes. sorry to hear that. It really hurts, doesn't it? Oh, my Lord. By the way, Duchovny doesn't know what he's talking about. That's not herpes. It's not herpes, yeah. right? Yeah, right, exactly. That man is not a dog. <laughs> it's, he, it's, uh, it's like exposed You got a big in. rash, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's a chicken pox virus. Right. And, and uh, after you, if you had, did you have chicken pox ever? Did you uh, when I was a kid, yeah. When you were a kid, so the virus never actually goes away. I see. And uh, at some point in your life, either because of stress or something else, it, the virus comes back, and it's much more painful as an adult. It really was terrible. And the thing was, it wasn't like painful just the rash. It was the pain that wasn't the rash. It was like, it felt like a pulled muscle or broken bones. Or right, right. Like but you had... You, you could definitely see the rash. Oh, you could see the rash, and then uh, the rash went away and the pain was still there. You, you know there's a vaccine for this. Yes, I know, and I'm going to get it. You're going to get it now. It, well, I've got a tattoo to get the weekend, and then... Uh, <laughs> Perfect. Really? You're gonna I I'm, not, I'm a doctor. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to condone or condemn. All right, okay. <laughs> That's good. Tell me about the special, by the way. I'm well, I'm really excited. You know, so I've been very interested in... I'm, I'm a big sports fan. I, mm -hmm. I uh, like watching football, and I was just... Uh, it's amazing to see the number of concussions that happen, uh, uh, certainly at the professional... I go concussion. You had a concussion. I play sports, yes. Is that right? What happened? Uh, I, I can't remember. I go concussion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I used to play... When I was but not school, football. I, I mean, because you're... you're well, kind of like football. Rugby. I rugby, used to play right, rugby. And, right. and we, it, basically, it's like football. But no helmets. No pads, and if you win, you drink the blood of the opposing team. <laughs> out, of, out of their skulls. 
But you, so, but you, you didn't have a helmet on, and that's the thing no, about I wasn't rugby. A helmet, yeah. and, and people say some people say it's actually safer not to wear a helmet because you're more likely to protect your head. With with football, you know, you might use use your helmet as a ramming device into somebody else, and, that, and that's part of the problem. Right. I, so, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I maybe I'd be. You know, the the symptoms of concussion I thought was so weird because I was crying uncontrollably. <laughs> I didn't even feel sad or feel like crying. I was like, the doctor's like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. I have no idea why this is happening. I mean, really, it was. It can, I mean, you can. It, the symptoms can be pretty vague. I mean, you can. You can. Uh, people may feel a little confused. They can have bad headache. I had a concussion once as well, uh, right. and I was. I was in, actually in, in the middle of the, the desert covering a story, and I, right. I got. Fl we were. We were. We were. Dri we were in a rock, and we were uh, driving along, and we were in a seven-ton truck. I was covering the war, and uh, we went over a uh, improvised explosive device, like and I got crap. thrown out of the truck, and I landed. Uh, landed on my head. You are yeah. badass. Yeah. Yeah, man. <laughs> That also gets the girls. Yeah, I, okay. yeah, I got concussion when I went over an IED in Iraq, and uh, and I'm a doctor. I know what to do. <laughs> But, you know, there's so many things that are happening in football that can make the game safer. And, and, right. and, and as a neurosurgeon I was a, and a sports fan, I was really interested in this. I have three daughters, so I, I don't think I'm going to have to make the decision about whether they play football. Mm. But, I, but I, you know, I think about this a lot, so we, we've been working on the documentary do you, for a year. Do you, do you think about, uh, you work about other sports as well, boxing and the, the contact sports? Yeah, no, no you, know, you know it was Ali's 70th birthday yesterday? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 42 years old is when he started to develop tremor. Right. And he wrote about it at the time, and he was fully convinced himself that it was due to, you know, the number of hits that he took to the head. And there's lots of data now to suggest, you know, that the people get, they be, uh, develop dementia, they can develop Parkinson's-like symptoms from well, boxing. Well, well, they get it from, but you can develop that without getting hit. You can, head right. Well, but, but at 42 years old, he started yeah. developing. And, and these football players, I mean, they, they retire. We never hear from them again. But as part of this documentary, we're talking to these players, and right. Craig, it's the most amazing thing. They're in their 40s or 50s. Right. They're they're, 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 they're handsome, they're, they're, they're physically fit, and they've already started to develop profound memory loss. It's, it's sad to see, but it's definitely because it's of the definitely blows because to the head. head injuries. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what the... So what were you, what you, you advocating the use of more helmets or different rules of the well, game, or what? Well, the thing about concussion, this is very interesting. Helmets can provide a certain amount of protection, but right. you think about when someone, they have a head hit, the brain is moving within the skull, right. back and forth. So the helmet can't really stop that. Uh, what you really, you know, it's just a stopping suddenly of the head, and the brain is moving like a beach ball. So you, what you probably do is inject Botox into the skull. That's right. That's yeah. right. And I would do it. Freeze the brain. Belt. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like a seatbelt. Yes. And then it would have the brain stuck in there. Right. And, and, yeah. You know, I'm not a doctor, but that's an awesome idea. Isn't uh, it's, 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 <laughs> It's in the documentary. Yeah. <laughs> what would you do then? How well, do you, you know, talk about that? There's two things. Part of all, if somebody if somebody gets a concussion, the biggest thing is you want to prevent them from getting a second one while the brain is still healing. So you got to recognize a concussion. So you wrote you're that's yeah, it, yeah, and it's just got to be the culture in high school right. as in college and professional. They want to get back in the game, and that that's just something that's got to change. What was interesting when I got concussion when I was playing rugby and it developed the uncontrollable sobbing, they allowed me to leave the field. <laughs> They're like, They're, yeah. please no leave problem. before the opposing team sees you! Yeah, that doesn't do too well for your teammates it's there when you're... It's very embarrassing. I still, to this day, well, I wonder about it. I think it was, but, I, I mean, I've been hit a couple of times in the head for less noble reasons than <laughs> Do you share? What well, I, I remember kind of like, kind of hazing out a little bit when I get punched a couple of times. Like, just, is that damage yeah. occurring? Like, where you just... Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I'm sorry you got punched, by the way. Oh, but, I, yeah, I, so. I, I fully deserve it. Please don't worry. <laughs> Yeah, I'd say, you know, it's going to be, you don't have to get knocked out to, to be a concussion. That's a misconception. Right. The people, they may have blurriness of vision. They may feel a little confused. Everything got really hollow for me when I, when I, when I uh, had the concussion. I just, all of a sudden, I couldn't hear everything. I felt like I was in a big box, you know. And, How uh, long did it take to clear up? Um, a couple of days, really, before yeah. I felt right back to myself again. So. What about uh, the emotional effects of something like that afterwards? Did you get, were you kind of freaked out a little bit? For well, a people, uh, they, they can become depressed uh, for yeah. a little bit after. And that, that may have explained the sobbing. Uh, they can become angry. Uh, they, uh... <laughs> I'd like to think that. But, uh... <laughs> The, uh, they can, they, and then the memory problems, you know, so then that can be just frustrating for people. They just can't remember what happened or even things around the event. That must either. be hugely frustrating. Yeah, you know yeah. That? Well, I look forward to the special. We're out of time. Do you, uh, do you want to do an awkward pause, mouth organ, or a big cash prize? You're a doctor. Big cash prize, yeah, I thought yes. so. What time is it, Jacques? It's time for the big cash prize. Big cash prize, 
50 American dollars uh, will fit an LEG string in the United States, uh, even though it's won by women. Two ways to win. You can answer a question, you can guess what's in my box. And by box, I mean imaginary box in my head, which Got I it. imagine, and Jeff knows what's in it. I do not know what's in it. Uh, <laughs> guess what's in the box. Okay. <laughs> Doctor, I don't know if you noticed, there are bees in the audience. <laughs> All right, I'm imagining a box. <laughs> and it's a fairly small box. Snug little thing, it is. Mm. I don't know what's in it, though. I don't know. Do you know, Doctor? Should I guess now? Yes. You said it was a small box? Mm. Soap dildo. <laughs> That's good, huh? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. You did, you did the call back there, right? Right there. <laughs> Jeff, what's in the box? Man, you're a friggin' genius. <laughs> it is soap dildo. It was a soap dildo! studio audience's enthusiasm when they saw me getting hit in the ass with a bat. <laughs> Luckily, I remembered the safety word. More. <laughs> that got me going a little bit there. My first guest tonight is the chief medical correspondent of CNN. He's a good friend of the show. He's very clever. He's a doctor, so behave yourself. Dr. Sanjay Gupta, everybody. Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Gupta, you look great, man. Thank you, sir. You, love, I love the new digs. You, you like it? Yeah, you it's do. all right, yeah. isn't it? It's the, it has the uh, operating theater light. <laughs> Perfect. Little love bit. It. Do you, you still, uh, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I still have lunch, <laughs> and you still operate, right? I do. I they, do. they have big, big banks of lights like that. So you you got to see what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Because you can't just kind of phone it in. No, you, you, yeah. right. Hey, and and you been well? You're, you're healthy? I'm, I'm good, yeah. I know, you, I'm all right. I had the colonoscopy. Remember we talked about it? Right, I had yes, it. Yeah, yeah, yes. no, I did. We share a lot together. Yeah, no. Uh, the last time you were here, we talked about it a little bit. Right. Right, and uh, I, so I had it because I turned 50. Uh, everything went well? well it was, I loved it. Did you? Did you? Uh, <laughs> You got, you got to sleep through the whole thing. Did yeah, they had to put me out because they were doing an endoscope as well. So they did that end. I hope they did that end first, but I don't know. Uh, <laughs> that end, and then the... And then they, the what, they, they did the from the top and the bottom? Yeah, they did both. Yeah, because huh. they got family history of stuff. Oh, is then, that right? Yeah, so they had to look there. And then the... I don't think they did it at the same time. It wasn't like picture in picture <laughs> right. or anything like that. Did, did, the, did the doctor say... I have a unique set of skills. I will find you and do a colonoscopy. <laughs> I think he was saying that while well, I was asleep. What um what I was, he was doing though what, when I came out of it because they uh, they puff air into your uh, colon. Right. They, you get really bad gas. Yeah. But yeah. you haven't had anything to eat for 24 hours, so it smells great. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like you. They're trying uh, to say your don't stink. Well, right, a little bit. What? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, come on, you're a doctor, man. You're a doctor. How are you doing? What's going on with I'm you? I'm doing great. You know, yeah? we're, we're in town. We're doing the uh, we're doing a uh, triathlon uh, coming up, and uh, we're having uh, nice. Yeah, just trying to stay fit. You know. Uh, you are looking very well. Are you doing it? I mean, are you overdoing it a little bit? A little bit, maybe. No, no. You know, I gotta tell you, I, f I feel really good. You know, I, I I've come to the point where I sort of, you know, want to make every moment in life count. Yeah, so, I, I know, hear you on that. Yeah, yeah? You, yeah. Do, you do the same thing. Yeah, I mean, I used to, like, when I was younger, I would squirt, like, days would go by, I don't even remember them, but now I'm like, oh, no, I... <laughs> no, it's, it's true, actually, as you get older, you're like, I, this is not forever. It's not forever. Right, right. And, and, and I think once I had kids, e e even more so. You know, I just, yeah. uh, you know, so, you know, things are going really well. Stay, staying very busy. What is the secret? This, the, I, if you had to say one thing is the secret to, to the, the, the real kind of 
health, physical health, what is the one thing that you should do uh, right know, away? Well, you know, f f from a from a pragmatic standpoint, I think it's probably to just simply eat less. Right. I think most people just simply eat nah, too I can't much go there. You're going to have to pick something else. I, right, right. <laughs> But, you know, I think, you know, it's interesting because I thought about this a lot. I think for me, it, it, it's this idea of waking up every morning and having some sense of purpose. Like literally getting out of bed and having some idea of what my... What my I can't go with you <laughs> in either of those two, so you're going to have to pick something else. You're still going to live forever. No, no, I, I tell you what, I... I every, now this, you tell me, you're a doctor. Every time I go and see a doctor for anything, whether it's, uh, you know, an illness or a checkup or an insurance thing or anything like that, they always say, you're under any stress? Any stress? It's like, they always go with stress. Is that me, or is that a thing doctors just, like, make up? Uh, no, I, I think it's a good first question. You know, you, and, you know stress is a, is a common denominator for all sorts of different problems. And, you know, it's funny because it's a vague term, so people don't, don't pay a lot of attention to it, but we're probably under a lot more stress than we realize. What about you? You under any stress? You know, it's, it's fine. I, do, I don't think it that I am consciously, but, you know, when I sort of sit back every now and then and just sort of, you know, whew, let a deep breath out after something well, let big. let a deep breath out. Let's, let's talk about your childhood. How was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> therapy with Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 do you, are you in therapy? Do you get therapy? No, I, you know, I don't. I, oh, really? I, I don't know if that's advice. <laughs> I, I uh, no, I'm not against it or anything, but you know, it's uh, it's it's one of these things where I, I, I feel genuinely pretty happy with life. I yeah, feel but like therapy I've... can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let, too much happiness. A problem. Well, I don't know. I mean, I I actually am a great uh, a great fan of it. It's it, I find it very yeah, you... very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, beca yeah, because you get to you know I think there's something about having a secretive. I have a very kind of suspicious secretive nature, and I think the more secrets I keep, the the sicker I feel. Really? Yeah, that's why I so, tell everybody all my uh -oh. on TV. <laughs> so it feels cathartic when you when you let I it out. I think there feel, there seems to be a feeling of freedom about it. Yeah. I don't feel empowered by secrets. I feel encumbered by them. Really? Yeah, yeah, you, I do. Are you feeling better right now? Just yeah, yeah. Sense? I feel like I've said that to you. And you're a doctor. You won't tell anyone what right. I'm saying. So it'd be all right. <laughs> oh, they don't care. <laughs> and you know, do you ever find yourself uh, getting very emotionally attached to any any particular? Case. Are you good at detaching yourself from that? No, I, you know, I think I get pretty emotionally attached to every case, probably. Really? You know? Yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not big on detachment. I think that that's probably over, overvalued. Now, you know, people say as a doctor you don't become too attached. I'll tell you an interesting thing, though, my, and this is totally different. I don't mean to liken the two, but I'm, I'm a big dog lover. Right. And I, and I have a 12-year-old dog, and, and I, I love pets, and my dog developed lung cancer. Oh, yeah. And it was it was it was emotionally just devastating. You know, it was he's, he's awesome. doing okay. We actually had to take him to the doctor, and you know, he had his lung removed. And then after that operation, he actually developed an, uh, an issue where he developed air around his lung. It was pushing on his lung, and I took him back to the doctor and actually had to decompress his chest myself to let the air out of his out of his chest cavity. And I and it was it was the most incredible thing because you know a dog you know he was he was sick he was dying and I did this myself. He's feeling much better now. Right. But it was this incredible incredible thing. I was very you know, I'm very attached to my yeah, to yeah. My dog, you, my I mean, you've never presumably you've never had to do that to someone you've known, like the, the, like someone you, you no. had a relationship with, right? I mean, the thing, and, but the, you do with the dog, with the dog, and dogs just have this unconditional Absolutely, love, you know, pets yeah. in general. I said, I got a French bulldog who doesn't really love anybody. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> But I, I they're a little bit aloof. Yeah, well, kind of a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What kind of a... It's a the Weimaraner. He's a big, oh. big dog, about 100 pounds. Oh, and, uh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Is it... Uh, do you find it a little difficult working around fur? Uh, well, yeah... <laughs> I mean, because you gotta, you, you gotta get some patients in there that are pretty, pretty fur. Pretty, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I, I do a lot of head, head surgery, right? So right, right. Just, so you, yeah. You actually shave the head. Yeah. Right. So it's, uh, it's, um. Oh yeah. You get, yeah. Yeah. It's tough for them. Oh. And but you know, we've done this thing now where we don't, we don't always shave the hair. We actually will just separate it and make a little bit of a, just a little thin strip. And and. Really? It, it's amazing. We, we can do the same operation, not shave the hair, but if someone doesn't have their head shaved. They actually recover much more quickly. They don't. They don't wow, look sick, so they don't feel sick. I wonder and if that's, that's like the stress thing we're talking about. Though. Yeah, you know, a yeah, little bit. It, that's fascinating. Yeah. If you don't look sick, you don't feel sick. Right. So you see, they literally get get up out of bed more quickly. They go home more quickly. They just they just feel better. So. Wow. What if uh, like it was a bald guy needed a <laughs> a piece of head surgery? If you put a wig on him and then cut, <laughs> cut through the wig, I'm going to try that. We're yeah, and then he'd be like, "I doctor." Actually, while he's out, because presumably you're under general to get that thing. Correct, so yeah. 
You could stitch a scalp on him. <laughs> that's right. Say, operation was a great success, and your hair's back. That's right. I don't know what happened. I feel better. Right. That's, that's right. terrific. Uh, we'll take a commercial break. We'll be right back with Dr. Sanjay Gupta. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, we're back. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, Dr. Sanji Gupta. We were just talking about. I had shingles earlier uh, in the year, and uh, one of the most were, painful things. It uh, was very. Have you ever had it? I have not, but you know, I had chicken pox as a child. And, right. As you well, know, then you can get it. Right. That, yeah. that virus lives in your body, and it can come back at any time. Do they, do they know why it suddenly came back? I think it was stress. Is that right? I think it probably was. Yeah. I got I got a little strip of it here. And I, had, I never felt anything like it in my life. I mean, I've had motorcycle accidents that I could laugh off compared to this. Right, I mean, right. it was like unbelievable. And then, um, did you take a narcotic pain medication? No, I don't do narcotics yes. anymore. Right, I did, right. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's really a thing for me. Like, people like me that have had problems with drugs, you know, you go, this is a problem with doctors, actually. You say, hey, look, uh, you know, because I said to the doctor, uh, it's going to be, this is really painful. He said, well, I can give you some codeine. I went, I can't take codeine. He said, it won't turn you into a drug addict. I said, I know, I already am a Tootsie Fruits drug addict. <laughs> That's why I can't take the codeine. You know, I, I'm working on this, this documentary, and I have to tell you, it's, I came across a stat that kind of boggled my mind. 80% of the narcotic opioid use anywhere in the world is here in the United States. Holy crackers. 80, we, we use 80% of all the pain medications uh, here in this country. I, well, I think it's a weird thing that people, I've noticed this, it's a kind of a, it's an odd kind of a prejudice, but people think if a drug's legal, then it's going to be somehow less deadly. Absolutely, and I think if a doctor gave him a prescription for it, therefore, you know, look, they know that, you know, taking an Oxycontin and having a beer is not a good idea. Right. But they don't expect it to kill you. Right. And every 19 minutes in this country, someone dies in exactly that way. Accidental prescription drug overdose. Well, the only, the only th I mean, I've taken a lot of drugs. Some of them legal, some of them illegal. And here's, here's We're what I... sharing again. No, no, I mean, it's not, this is no news. And, and the, the, what I, I mean, look, look at, look at me. You know, so... But what I've noticed, the only thing I noticed about uh, legal drugs or drugs that obtain from doctors, they're just better. They're just, just better quality drugs. You know what you're getting as well. Right, right. I mean, it's not cut with all sorts of breaking bad in there. It's like... <laughs> You know, that stuff's pretty pure, right? Yeah, what they're saying. I, I don't know. I mean, but no, yeah. it's 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 quite something. You know, you take a, a couple of oxycontin, for example. You know, they can prescribe two every eight hours. If you take an Ambien on top of that, which is a pretty common pill, and you you have a couple of beers or a couple of glasses of wine, what I've just described is a potentially lethal combination. And these aren't people who are drug addicts. These aren't people who yeah. think that they you know want to die or even think that they might die. And all of a sudden, they just they don't they don't wake up. They stop this breathing. is this is you know like this is. A it's Friday night. You're freaking out a lot of people right Sorry. now. Sorry. <laughs> Listen, we're out of time. You want an apple? I'll keep you healthy. Apple a day. Keeps the doctor away. Here I am. Dr. So Sanjay Gupta, everybody. We'll be right back. Okay. My first guest is the anchor of Sanjay Gupta, MD. It must be uh, Sanjay Gupta, I think. Uh, He's the chief medical correspondent for CNN. Yep, it's going to be Sanjay Gupta. It's Sanjay Gupta! Sanjay, Sanjay, Sanjay. I've come just in time, I see. You, you have arrived just in time. I have so many questions about medicine. I, I'm here to keep you healthy. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> you know the, uh, the Michael Douglas thing about he, apparently he got uh, throat, throat cancer from uh, uh, making people happy? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's a... Uh, Is that a real thing? Yep. It's, oh, it's, it's, oh, no! <laughs> Leaves a, uh, leaves a bad taste in the mouth. No, come on. <laughs> um, You've said that before. No, you did. Yes, you have. No, just no. Yes, you have. What kind of guy do you think no. I am? No. Come on. In. No, it's, it's, it's a real thing. It's, it's interesting. Uh, the human papillomavirus, HPV, yeah. it, it, people think of it causing cervical cancer. Right. But it can also cause oral cancer. It actually causes more cases of oral cancer than, than smoking and drinking does do now. And the people who have, the, the, the numbers have grown significantly, and they've grown most among 
Caucasian men. Yeah, right. I, I know. <laughs> around the ages of 40 to 60. Really? Is that true? Well, it's true, yeah. <clears throat> Smoking and drinking is... <laughs> There's good treatment if you, if you Oh, wow. It's early detection, though, with all cancers, right? Early detection. That's what you're looking for, right? Uh, absolutely. It can be hard sometimes with oral cancer. Sometimes those cancers can, I mean, they can be behind the tongue. They can be hard to find. Sometimes you may not have any symptoms until it's, the cancer's grown quite significant. Yeah, so. man. This is terrifying. It seems to me that you guys come up with a new thing to scare the pants off everybody every <laughs> week. Like, like anything that is remotely pleasurable. <laughs> Then, you know, it's like, uh, you eat this, you're going to die. You smoke this, you're going to die. You stick your face in there, you're going to die. What, what, what do you, what? You know what I'm talking right. about, doctor. You're a man of medicine. It's a broadcast show. I'm trying to keep it to... Ah, don't keep bother it. about it. Nobody knows we're here. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. How are you doing? What's going on at CNN? You guys hurry our uh, Larry King back? You got him back yet? No, but I wish we did. Yeah, I, I love Larry. Did, he's, yeah. he's terrific. He no, things, are, things are going great there. We're, we've been busy. The news cycle's been busy. Um, the, what are you doing? Have you been out doing these field reports yeah, that you're doing? Yeah, I've been traveling all over. You know, there's been a lot of um, disasters. Ugh, I've been horrible. I mean, and uh, in Boston and Oklahoma and Texas. But uh, I've been working on this documentary for quite some time. Of What's a, that? It's all about uh, marijuana. Oh, hello, doctor. Yes. Yeah. Well, this is an interesting. No, a medical man's opinion. All right. Yeah. You know, and I and I decided I really wanted to approach this from a you know I'm a neuroscientist, mm -hmm. and I you know I, I I don't have a big dog in this race quite 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 frankly, but but I've been. I don't smoke it either, but I used to. I hear you. Yeah. 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 And, and, but it's interesting because I I my eyes have really been open. I've traveled literally around the world, and I I have to say it's it there's a lot of inconsistencies, hypocrisy, and things that have frankly just outright surprised me when it comes to this. You know, in this country for, since the late 1930s, yeah. uh, there was this documentary that came out called Reefer Madness. I've seen it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it portrayed people who smoke marijuana as these, you know, on the fringe, sex crazed, unproductive members of society. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Still correct, yeah. <laughs> you, you come to find out that it's, it was 100% funded by DuPont Chemical. Uh oh. The, the documentary was. Yeah. And it got got us thinking. What 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 exactly is going on here? But suffice it to say, there was a lot of competing interests. There were a lot of people who did not want marijuana to be legalized in this country. They don't want it legalized medicinally. They want it legalized recreationally, because it could compete with other things. It could compete with medicines. Hemp could compete with other products like nylon. And and it was amazing to me just how much our attitudes have been cemented uh, for 70 years in this country because of it. I was in Israel where mm -hmm. they're doing some of the foremost research in the world on this. Mm -hmm. And I was talking to this guy who's won the Israeli Prize in Science. He's you know, about 80 years old. And he, and he says, you Americans are a bunch of prudes on this issue. And I was, I was really, yeah, they, they, they allow people to, to, to vaporize marijuana in hospitals. They, 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 they give it to people who, who have failed other therapies. It's, it's quite amazing to me. And I think this well, the thing is about marijuana, the, as far as I can make out in my limited research, <laughs> it seems to me that like marijuana, when I took marijuana, which I freely admit I took a lot when I was younger, I thought, this is actually, I don't like this. I prefer whiskey. But, um, <laughs> or there were other class A drugs that I did. But, <laughs> but some people seem to really enjoy marijuana in a way that it just doesn't sing to me like that. Like gambling. Some people are really into gambling. I'm like, eh. The hypocrisy of this is something we're going to really... Exposed yeah, it's, the, it's the new hot button. It's the new gay marriage. It's like everyone's going got, crazy. Now. Well, you know, I mean, you talk about, the, again, when it was in Israel, and they say, you know, this 80-year-old scientist, this very legitimate scientist, say, you Americans are a bunch of prudes. And he's talking about marijuana, but he's also talking about gay marriage he brought up and how we fund things. And if it you're was a gay pothead, amazing. you should go to Israel. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, I, it's been, it's, you know, I love doing these documentaries because it's like you get a mini master's degree in it. And yeah, I, you're you know, great at them, too. I we we are out of time, that. unfortunately. It's a fascinating subject, but I, I, I'd like to talk to you more about it. But unfortunately, I can feel CBS get nervous. <laughs> <laughs> and when they notice I'm here, things go wrong. <laughs> what do you got over there? That's the, yeah, somebody left us out. Apparently there's a cartoon show, some kind of animated show that's on Nickelodeon called Sanjay and Craig. And it's about, uh... It's about us. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> that's you, right? Well, there's a little Indian guy and there's a snake. Yeah, and I'm... I'm not sure I, which one is... And I, no, I, the snake is Craig. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. I thought that was a little Indian guy, yes. Unless, no, you, you wouldn't... No, see, that's what well, they do. That's what they do. I know who made this. And really? they're, they're saying I'm a snake. <laughs>
it, you feel, you, you feel badly about this? I never heard of it until today. I'm a snake charmer. That's what I am. I don't mind if you do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> Where this? <laughs> I'll be back in uh, eight months. Uh, <laughs> can never get rid of him, can you? <laughs>